What's up, everybody? Welcome to the podcast, uh, Bootsy Greencast, you know, because I have a porn star name and I, you got to use it. Today, I have Matt Barker on the podcast. He is a comedian, Red Pill Ranger, CEO <laughs> of Fake Alien Invasions. We're going to get in a lot of trouble today, and I'm really, really excited. I want to shout out to my folks at Content Safe for distributing this so that when we do get in trouble, it'll still exist somewhere out in the Ethernet at the internet ether ether sphere i don't even know what it's called anymore but matt i want to thank you uh sincerely for coming on and chatting with me today welcome to the show thank you thank you for having me on i uh or bootsy green well what, what did you say you're doing again? i it's that's just my stripper name it saved me yeah. i don't know hundreds of dollars on seo at this point right <laughs> Because like yeah. Owen Hunt is my name, but like I mean, Google that dude, and just, it's just the dude from Grey's Anatomy. So, I'm I'm trying to capitalize on Red Pill Ranger too. That's that's the I think that's the way to go. I think so too. Like if you have a unique name that people can search, then you know, and you know, we can talk about that. Red Pill Ranger. Um, yeah. How did that come about? Tell me a little bit about the history behind it. Um, I think I was, you know, just you know, the Matrix. Uh, getting the red pills, getting the truth out. And I uh, like the, uh, is, is, I don't know if it's really, um, what's the word for it? Uh, alliteration. No, red pill razor, no. It just sounded nice, I guess. Um, and uh, I remember one time I, when I first put up red, when I first like made the name red pill ranger, I put it on my Instagram and like a good amount of people thought it meant I hate women for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> second guess yeah <laughs> you know, <they're> like, <laughs> i'm like how did you know <laughs> no uh, i uh it's a truth ranger i i need to because it's it's really kind of just like an offshoot isn't it of the you know the red pill meaning uh, how to deal with women and incels and all that oh yeah that's right there's like yeah. a couple there's several meanings for that now right like like the uh fill in the blank anonymous uh that yep. was totally like a red pill type of thing too even maybe even saying red pill is going to get us in trouble at this point like yeah i mean you made a great youtube video today uh, yeah. <laughs> that was just nope nope no you can't you guys your fact I can't say it. <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're doing they, sh they shut off my hashtags for that video too oh. they i can't say it <laughs> i can't make fun of fact checkers dude i mean i just <laughs> lost 15 <laughs> followers right now by talking to you <laughs> I probably, <laughs> I, someone's going to come into your house, dude. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, man, like the, the, you know, truth sort of thing. I, I, I like that. I like, um, I like trying to, but I didn't think about the fact that like the, there's that whole like movement of uh, pickup artists or whatever. Yeah. I was just thinking maybe you were slipping those into people's drinks or something. I don't know. <laughs> I, you know just, here's some truth. Here's some truth serum for you. Honestly, I wish I could. That's good. Be like the electric oh. acid Kool Aid test. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I and, and uh, I think it's necessary to, when I made Red Pill Ranger. Another thing is uh, to establish that I'm not like 100% serious about my my videos because my videos were like comedy. And when I when I didn't have that nickname, people thought me making the comedy videos. It was like 80% thought I was like serious. They were like, I'm with you, brother. <laughs> I'm like, man, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I had, uh, I had a, a serious QAnon on. Uh, and this was a few weeks ago before the election. And I mean, obviously, I haven't reached out since. Oof, man. <laughs> yeah, it hurts. But, um, but, you know, like I listened to everything that he had to say. I was, I was real respectful and and all that it just it just didn't make a whole lot of sense to me i'm like dude you're following an anonymous person that <laughs> or persons yeah or persons like how can you trust that you know and it's like well the you know the math and the statistics and i was like dude that doesn't make any sense and like the the, the, the basic argument was well you know do you do some research about it and i'm like dude first of all I don't have time. <laughs> you know, that's why I yeah, asked you dude. to come on the show. Yeah, please tell me. You can tell me about it. Um, but it doesn't seem like that whole scene really panned out at this point. Oh yeah. It uh it does it doesn't seem like that because I've and I, I, I look at all conspiracies as much as I can. Cause they're hilarious, most of them, to be honest. And yeah. 
and uh, they're very entertaining. And yeah, when they get, there's a fine line between, uh, between uh, you know, it's got to be like 80, 70% entertaining and 30% truth. That's like the perfect conspiracy for me, but QAnon kind of flips it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was one of my favorites for sure, just because it seemed a little far-fetched. I remember when I first heard about it, and honestly, like the first thing uh, that I thought was, this can't be true because Donald Trump can't keep a secret. Like, no. there's no way. Oh, if yeah, he yeah. was like that, then he would be bragging about it to everyone, you know? Well, oh, that's just uh, <clears throat> that's just one theory of who QAnon is. Like, I was... Like people were talking about how it was like JFK Jr.'s QAnon. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> and did you see the guy? Did you see the guy that uh, they said was JFK? No. Oh my God. Um, his name's like something Vega. Vincent you Vega? No. Is, is that? Wait, hold <laughs> no, on. Is sorry. that it? No, that's from. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's from Pulp Fiction. But I can't help but think of Face Off and like Nick uh, Cage and John Travolta and then That's John Travolta crazy. and then a link to Paul. Dude, I, to hear how I know you just woke up from a nap. I'm not trying to bombard you. You're, you're blowing my mind. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you got to see what these guys believe is JFK. Is, so there's something Vega guy, or I forgot his name. Um, they said he, it's actually JFK Jr. and he didn't die and he got plastic surgery to look like this ugly jew looking guy that's the best way i can describe it and uh and that's not anti-semitic it's just it looks he looks like a jewish person and um it's hilarious how people think that's jfk jr i'm looking it up right now if we can do it i'm gonna okay, screen okay. share this thing all um, right it's the funniest thing and, and they really a good portion of them believe it some of the q and honors uh, i'm gonna type real jfk Real JFK. I'm gonna type in plastic surgery too, so wait, we can wait. get this here. I don't, I don't know this guy's name, man. QAnon followers say this man is JFK Jr. Vincent Fuchsia. Vincent Fuchsia. Vincent Fuchsia. All right. Uh, F U S C A. <laughs> you got it. And like, go to images. <laughs> it's like in the world. I'm going right now. Okay. Oh my God. You've got to be kidding me. Right, so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to screen share this. Hold on. <laughs> oh no, that's too good. That's him, huh? No, no, no. That's fine. That's fine. No, that's, that's uh, edited. Right, hold on. Go, go back. Go back. Okay. Yeah, that's a fuchsia. Hang on. Hang on. Right, here we go. I think that's yeah, that guy. That there. This one right here. Yeah. Okay. They said that's JFK Jr. Oh, Dude, he's looking rough. You yeah, know, that's no way for good. a Kennedy to live, dude. <laughs> no, look at that hat. That's bad enough. <laughs> he's wearing a. Is that a fedora? No, it's that's a, a different. It's it's a fedora made out of hay. You know, <laughs> just like, and then he's wearing a lanyard. I mean, come on, dude. I don't trust anybody with a lanyard oh, on. That's a cattle tag for tourists. Well, that it's part of the costume, man. He's he's hiding in plain sight. <laughs> I guess so. With those round glasses on, that's pretty funny. Yeah, Dude. I, don't, I don't know if so I. So he, he got plastic surgery, and for what? Like, what? Was he going to like come out and be like, hey guys, <laughs> it's me, JFK Jr.? <laughs> I just wanted to make sure I never got laid ever again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they were a big part of QAnon, believe that. Oh, people believe that he was QAnon. And, uh, and then um, a Actually, uh, I, th I would say an even big part, I believe, that uh, QAnon was a, I think me, me and you were talking about this, a uh, quantum computer or metaphysics and all that. Did you hear about that? I, I think that's maybe what the guy that I had that I interviewed was saying, something like that. Like, oh, we can prove that, you know, look at this, all this evidence, statistic, statistical evidence. And I just, I mean, I don't know, dude. I can't do those calculations, like goodwill hunting kind of, stuff you know i, I don't know He's oh like it's statistician or whatever if it if if a conspiracy involves numbers it's it's automatically debunked for me yeah. i don't yeah it's, it's, <laughs> it's no way jose yeah, it's, yeah, it's just not gonna happen i mean unless it involves like <laughs> boobs upside down on a yeah. calculator or something yeah. maybe, maybe at that point what number was that it was like it was 
maybe. 58, See, we can't yeah. even do that math. We can't even yeah. do booby math. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's so but yeah, uh, I love the conspiracies myself. Like, they're a lot of fun. I think that's a really good, fun angle to do comedy. Oh with, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely is. Um, it's it's like I was I was saying earlier. You gotta like, you. I think the best conspiracy is. 70% entertaining, 30% uh, truth. Uh, and yeah, that's the biggest problem I found in comedy is it's not sounding insane. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> what are some of your other favorite ones that you, uh, you like? Honestly, honestly, the, uh, I guess going back to, uh, um, going back to the quantum computer, uh, he went on, that was hilarious one of the funniest ones to me only because of when that story broke, like the first person on YouTube to, uh, to, to break this to QAnon was this like, <laughs> was this, I got to find a video. It was just a small channel and it was this a bedridden guy. He was like, he was laying in the hospital. It was a mental hospital. He was in a mental hospital. Oh, God. <clears throat> and then the entertainer, not the entertainer, the, the reporter was interviewing him and he was just like, he was the most unbelievable, like, you did not believe it. You should not believe anything he says. He was, like, on drugs, saying QAnon is a quantum computer. And uh, I forgot his name. Damn. But it was, it, I, it was so long ago, I forgot what the guy, like, the other channel and stuff. But it was the funniest thing I've ever seen. Because QAnon took that, and then they said, yeah, this is, this proves it's a computer. And it's just this catacomic guy in a, in a mental hospital, it was like, yeah, and then it's in the future. And then that believe, they believed it. I'm like, these guys are fucking crazy. Oh, man, dude. It's like some people will just believe anything, you know? Like, I, they don't even need evidence. They just get excited. And I, I don't know. It's disappointing because critical thinking, you know, a little bit of logic, oh, yeah. you know, just a, the 70 30 thing. It's, I feel like you're, you're not really even clearing the, the bell curve. You know, yeah, no, no. <laughs> it's unfortunate. You gotta be, I don't know, man. It's conspiracies are fun, but no, that was I was just touching back on that. My favorite conspiracy right now, oh man, I don't even know. Uh, I got because I, I have so many that are just hilarious. The, uh, well, yesterday we, we, the world was we were all supposed to die yesterday, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we like died in 2012 right and then we're still like that's why it's gotten so weird well it was off they got the math wrong <laughs> and, oh. that was, and it was it's yesterday we died got it. that's <laughs> why we missed it we you know debunked on the map again <laughs> yeah. Fuck. dude uh that was some of the because i love because once one thing i've noticed is before uh covid before covid conspiracies were kind of they trickled in and it was actually a lot easier to consume conspiracies because they trickled in, but dude, when COVID happened and then the election, it's like you get every day on the, in the boards I go to, whether it's like, you know, 4chan's X or some hidden Reddit subreddits that haven't been banned yet. And, or, you know, other sites, it's literally like 200 conspiracies a day off on one single subject. It's just too much it's too much to consume. Have you, have you noticed that? Yeah, I think that's, <clears throat> I think that's actually a conspiracy itself, right? Like to just yeah. flood with information and all this, these different ideas and po possibilities, they've just been saving up, you know, like the cons conspiracy piggy bank and to just smash it and let the conspiracy flood of information, just all those Russian bots just unleash them. Well, it wasn't Russian bots. It was JFK Jr. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he thought of, he thought up of all, all the conspiracies. <laughs> yeah. In incredible, like that's what he's been yeah. hiding, you know, just storing that stuff up. But yeah, it's kind of funny, like, because yeah, there were just tons and tons and tons. You know, there are new theories about like how diseases are born, and you know, oh, man. I especially like yeah, at the beginning of the, all the pandemic stuff. Like, I was pretty wrecked on the couch. I mean. 
you know, I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty resilient emotionally. I've just built up some, you know, some calluses, some emotional calluses, but <laughs> by having my dreams crushed over and over again, you know, of course, like you, get, yeah. you get used to it. We're, you, know, you do comedy, right? Yeah, I <laughs> got a dream comes every day. Every day my dreams crush. Every single day. <laughs> but like at the beginning of it, like things were going actually pretty well. And I was like kind of excited. And, and then I wound up like going down all these wormholes or mm-hmm. rabbit holes again. And uh, just getting like emotionally just kind of off course. Uh, we yeah. lost a business too. You know, I was doing like an Airbnb oh, business. Oh, dang, dude. Yeah. Sorry I mean, about that. It's all, it's, it's all right. I mean, I think that if you can, you know, learn how to, um, you know, just pivot, uh, try to find an advantage in a situation, um, then you can ultimately, you know, find some silver lining. Um, I agree. You you can, you can totally do it. Uh, It's not always easy, but um, you got two choices. You can find a silver lining or you can just (laughs) <laughs> you know do the down mention jfk file. okay yes <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so i actually <clears throat> overall since since that I, I joined autonomy uh which is richard grove's course we we briefly mentioned before the show and okay. i oh, so really that's recent yeah yeah I, I started it in um i think i had my like uh, discovery call or whatever it's called with him in July, right around my birthday. And then I got work <clears throat> in, um, in August at the beginning of August, right after that unemployment ba- gravy train yeah, uh, took yeah. off. I got a job working on a prank show. Um, oh, wow. So and I've done a bunch of those as a producer and uh, oh, producer. Okay. And yeah. Casting. <clears throat> doing the casting thing so basically i was captain catfish pretty much like hey what's up you want to come over here and get a free hot dog on tuesday or something you know and people wait show you're up. catfishing people yeah basically. was that the prank well the the prank was basically like i was putting people to work in order to be on a television show and then afterward we reveal and tell them so it could be i'm just you know the ruse is different every time it seems like slavery it's worse. It's <laughs> far, far worse than that. Um, you know. <laughs> All right. Hell yeah. I can't even say like on air some of the stuff that we've done. Um, Cause some of it I'm legitimately embarrassed and ashamed of myself <laughs> about. Um, some of it I'm really proud. Like I was actually able once to set up my former uh, pastor. Uh, okay. That was, that felt good. That felt like right, you know, like that was finally, that was just. Could you say what you set him up doing or? Uh, he, I set him up to cast a demon out of someone. I can't say who. <clears throat> and JFK he, Jr. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you blow my cover. We're going to get in trouble. Now this is going to know. Um, but yeah, so yeah, right around uh, July, got involved in that. And then you know, uh, just like graduated the program like a week ago. So it was like a 12 week program. And it's really cool because like you, I've done a lot of like different marketing programs from all these marketing gurus or whatever. They're like, here, buy my program, buy my book or whatever. And then you do. And sometimes you get like some good nuggets out of there. Uh, but they never offer like, like a community. And that's, what's cool about autonomy is that there's a whole community on the other side of people to connect with who kind of share values and stuff like that. So yeah, networking, man, it's gotta be essential. It's kind of important right now. And so that's one thing that I've, I've been trying to focus on, take some of those tools and then shift over and try to build community because, you know, uh, things are getting tough and, uh, that's, I mean, that's what we got to do is just try to help each other out as much as we can and we're stuck in our homes so we got to do it over the internet oh yes 100 <laughs> percent. so but it's been but it's been good you know like from shifting we had an airbnb business and uh and that was good i live in a college town here athens georgia <clears throat> so oh, football sweet. season people yeah. would come piss on our sheets and get the hell out of dodge so those were my <clears throat> clients for a while <clears throat> so Yo, what experience oh so what yeah so yeah so <laughs> we just uh so basically what I would do is I would find people who couldn't rent their homes out for the fall for football season. And I would be like, yo, um, we'll, we'll rent them out on Airbnb for you. Oh, I thought you were just running out your home. No, I, you had a, 
I was doing that too, but I had other partners that we had partnered with That's and some, cool. some for like a long time. And she just sold her house, uh, which is good. Um, but yeah, I guess I say all that to say, like, even though that business is gone, I was able to now work with more people that I have similar values with. I'm connecting with you, for instance, I may not have had time mm -hmm. to do that working on that business, you know, oh, yeah. having those folks come in, which don't get me wrong. I'm not mad to have clients that come through and pay money, but it's kind of cool to like connect with people who have, who like to make fun of conspiracies, you know, or oh, yeah. have certain particular, you know, ideologies in mind. Not that it's like an echo chamber type of thing, but. <clears throat> oh, no. It, well, it's, 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 I feel like you're doing the opposite of an echo chamber. You're bringing all sorts of people on. I want to. Yeah. That's what, yeah. I, I really like that. <clears throat> and just trying to, you know, establish a community. There's like a time bank and I've got some friends who are comedians. I've got a lot of like woo woo people who are friends of mine, like people who are into tarot readings and all kinds of different stuff like that. Devil shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, like, they're like raising JFK from the grave. Those are the people that are responsible for all this. They started it. Um, and so you know people can just trade back and forth there in the time bank and do some stuff like that and i'm just trying That's to cool. trying to cultivate some community you know oh but I, you did say uh someone that uh when, when you explained to me i think one thing i do want to touch on is someone that um makes fun of conspiracies i think i i wouldn't say i'm, I'm someone that makes fun of conspiracies yes but i think uh I make fun of like new, like this year conspiracy theorists mainly because, because for something happened like this year to where conspiracy theorists went like an insanely serious, almost like dangerously serious. Yeah. Cause before conspiracy theories, you know, they were serious, but they were like, they were fun. It's, it's almost like a, a story you tell around the fire. That's why, that's why I love, that's why I first got into conspiracy theories, but yeah, something happened this year, man, where, they're so serious like yeah i mean i think that's one thing that people sometimes we got to let go of that sacred cow whatever that is you know oh, yeah. and if that's like that's like the conspiracy theorists or the people who are you know into the church or whatever you know you should be able to make fun of health healthily stuff that you even believe in right right i ah. mean <clears throat> I know what it is. Uh, my my buddy David was talking about this because uh, he he's been into conspiracy theories for a you know good amount as well. And I think people that were into conspiracy theories and they knew it before COVID, before the coronavirus, um, they had a foundation. You know, like they had like yeah, uh, you know, MK Ultra, all these things. There's all these connections. So they slowly built it up, and it's and it was it's there was it's built up so they can they understand if oh. Now China did this to ruin the world or whatever you want to believe. So you don't freak out. That's, that's normal conspiracy theorists, you know, back in the day, but new people because of COVID COVID made everyone sit in their homes and uh, you know, get into conspiracy theories because they're questioning why I'm at home and people that had, that had no foundation, didn't know, didn't know MK ultra. They had panic attacks. It went insane because they didn't know all these connections. Like everything was connected. Yeah. So that's why I think people are taking conspiracies way too seriously. Yeah, that makes sense. I think it reminds me of like uh, something Tim Dillon said, where it was like, like, you know, a lot of people have had a little bit of exposure, prolonged exposure, right? Like to a lot of these right. ideas over time. But he's like, imagine just like walking right in to all of this and your mind just completely Wait, blown. You're like, when did Tim Dillon say that? Maybe my friend just copied Tim Dillon and said maybe, that. Maybe, <laughs> maybe so. It was a few months ago, but he's like, well, right around the Wayfair thing, remember when like they were selling lockers named uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Monica or whatever? Right. Right maybe, around okay. that time. So, I think my friend copied Tim Dillon. Right. <laughs> <laughs> shout out, hey, shout out to Dave if you're watching. You fucking... <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's, it is, it's a good point. I'm not, I mean, he can, he probably came to that same conclusion too, you know, it's like, yeah. Cause like before people were like, just being a little bit, a little bit, a little bit like breadcrumbed into this thing. Right. Like you learn, like you said, you know, you learn about like MK ultra or yeah. I don't know, some, some weird thing. Ross That's Charles, how I, all that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The, the banking system or whatever. Right. Kind of how I came in, I think. 
my mom actually, I think pulled me in, in like 2012 by like introducing me to like some crypto zoology or something like that. Like the, 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 I don't know, the, the dog man or something. I used to listen to Art Bell though, too. When I was Art Bell, man, I love his voice. Like his, I, and I, you know, I, I haven't got into Art Bell as much as I should. I've only listened to like three of his broadcasts. Is he worth it? He's now, is he like, I mean, th- some of those classic interviews, I remember they would have open lines. I started listening to that stuff in high school because uh, I would just be up late uh, listening to it like late at night on like a Friday night. I'm 15, 16 years old. I'm hearing about like uh, out of body experiences and um, what was it? Qu- um, what is it called when you uh, remote viewing and like yeah. hearing people talking about like how you can leave your body and like go visit. So I'm trying to like pick up girls, you know, by leaving my body and like, <laughs> that's some creepy shit, man. I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be admitting to this on air. I feel, but no, he's great. I love Art Bell. <clears throat> and, no, and I think what you said is perfect. That, that's, I think the, the way you should, you should digest conspiracies. It's like, you know, it's almost, the same as uh like ghost stories it's it's something fun to talk about it's interesting it's and it's nothing too serious it's nothing crazy but what tim dylan said my friend david people just got boom just hit with it and then they lost their mind yeah i mean it's kind of hard not to lose your mind yeah i would i probably would have too yeah 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 because like so in those old days of art bell like that's like truck drivers would listen to that show and then the best episodes were open lines if you can find some open lines dude please uh it's called Art, art bell open lines yeah, when he would do like open line calls, people could call in from wherever and people would like call in from the future. They'd be like, hey, Art, it's me. I'm calling from 2035. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Well, no, that was QAnon, man. Yeah, oh, shit. exactly, exactly. Well, that's why I think, you know, it was palatable for most people who were like, because you had to know that there was some trolling going on, right? Like you oh, had yeah. to use your own critical thinking skills and know that like some of the stuff on here may have some elements of truth to it. And then some of the stuff on here is completely some whack job, you know, like yeah, man. in an insane asylum, like the QAnon guy. It, uh, yeah, it, what's it called? And that, I think that's the essence of conspiracy theories because they're theories, but yeah, people, but it's, it's almost fully serious nowadays. And that's what I, that's what I hate so much. Yeah. The people just, yeah, they're, it's, well, it's polarizing at that point. It's not even a conversation anymore. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. It's just like, you're either, you either believe this 100% or we can't be friends anymore. Oh yeah. I've lost (laughs) followers this way, man. One of my, one of my videos, this guy, I was talking about like, uh, uh, something about pedophiles in Korea and, uh, the guy was like, Hey, what are we going to do, man? I'm like, what? what are you talking about? He's like, he's like, how are we going to get these pedophiles? He was serious. It's like, what are we going to do? We got to go to their business. I'm like, dude, I'm like a comedian. I'm not going to do anything. He's like, well, so you're joking about this? I'm like, yeah, I'm clearly joking. And then he unfollowed me. Oh, oh, and not, not, not only did he unfollow me. He said, I'm going to, he said, I'm sending your name to a so- my associates. And then he blocked me. I'm like, what the fuck? Jesus, dude. I mean, dude, it's just, they're so serious. Tell me a little bit about Korea. What were you doing out there? Um, so I, I, I taught in Korea for three years. Uh, and then I went back to LA and I, cause I've only done stand up comedy for a, a little, a year and a half. Okay, cool. So I started, yeah, stand up comedy in 2019, very beginning of 2019. But yeah, before that I taught in Korea for three years and, uh, yeah, I just love it. I, it's just a culture I love. I, if I could live there forever, I would. But unfortunately, they're too serious for comedy. It's like, I can't be a comedian over there. Uh, it's very sad. That is sad. I, I feel like there's a lot of cultures like that. Like, that's something that's special about the United States. I mean, you don't hear a lot. You know, there's Yakov Smirnoff or whatever from, yeah, the, from the 70s. Guy. But, like, <clears throat> you know, he wasn't going to make it there. You know what I mean? Like, Stalin yeah, ain't yeah. having that shit. You know, if you think Trump's bad on social media, you know, Stalin was a real bully. But <clears throat> he, was, he, was, he was almost, in, you know, uh, oh, yeah. impossible on Twitter. But um, <clears throat> Stalin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Stalin was bad. But um, what what would Stalin have said? What like remember? Because he told all his countrymen to like 
basically fight or die. <laughs> I'm trying, trying to think of his, what his Twitter would look like when he's saying that. Oof. I don't know, <laughs> man. <laughs> or he would just retweet memes. That would be, that would be even funnier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, You'd be like no, anyway. having bread contest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bread contest? Jesus Christ. He's gross. That's bad. That's bad. But uh, but I, I should I should I should take a step back. Korea has comedy, but this is one thing I've noticed in Korea and Japan, and honestly, every other country besides like Anglo countries, to be honest, uh, their their humor is like seventy years behind. Like their their main source of humor is slapstick. That's like really yeah. And that it's basically like 1920s America is their humor now. Wow, like slapstick, kind of like Groucho Marx esque. Yeah, I love that stuff, man. It's mm. good, but it's very outdated. Like it's it super is. outdated. It is. So yeah, stand up. And then I mean, I think the bi- the biggest reason for that is got to be free speech or something because stand up comedy can't exist there because you can't say anything bad. Right. No, I think that's exactly why it is. You know, and. Uh... <clears throat> and they just got the like the hello my honey hello my baby yeah <laughs> kind of frog going on That's pretty much it man and they really love making fun of fat people it's hilarious wow they really i don't know why they love it <laughs> that's very outdated yeah yeah <laughs> and mean, I- uh yeah I don't know. <laughs> what's it called sarcasm doesn't exist there i had really a lot of problems with my exes because everything they everything they said they thought it was serious. Literal, yeah. <laughs> and if you want to hear the truth, that's why I went to Korea. The Korean woman. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. No, there's there's a I think there's a lot of people who who do the very same thing. I had a buddy who who went over to I think it was Thailand maybe, but it was somewhere over in Asia for sure. Because he was like yeah, the lady was. Wife. Yeah, he was like I'm gonna <laughs> find a wife, bro. I'm like all right, cool, neat, go for it. Yeah. What got you into comedy? It, 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 uh, uh, what's it called? I did go over there for the culture, not just the women. Yeah. By no. the way, <laughs> I I would assume. Yeah. Um, Experience. Well, a comedy I've I've you know my whole life I I actually started in Tampa when I was like nineteen and twenty, and uh, and then I went to college and then college got in the way, and then I finished college, went to LA for a year, and then Korea. So then I was like, when I was in Korea for three years, I was like, I gotta go back. I could actually do this, you know, dream of mine. And then I did stand up for a year and a half and then COVID it. <laughs> yeah, fun. So were you in LA when, when that went down or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my buddy that believes in conspiracy theories a lot <laughs> in a serious note, he, he locked us all in his apartment. He's like, we can't leave for two weeks because he was afraid of the coronavirus. But he also didn't believe it was real but he was afraid of it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's, that was when the COVID first hit and then we, everyone moved to Utah. Okay. I feel like I'm rambling. I'm not even making coherent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I've gone crazy. The conspiracy theories have gotten to me. Yeah, I was in LA when that happened. And um, I was in LA when that happened. And uh yeah, it's all comedy shut down. It's crazy, as you, I'm sure you're well aware of. Yeah, yeah, it's it is crazy. I mean, I that's funny that you could be think it, that the whole thing's fake and also horrified of it at the same. That sounds like a book. It sounds like something out of a book, right there. Um, <clears throat> but that makes um, that makes sense too. Uh, what what uh, what took you to Utah? So Utah is just it's basically all my me and my buddies my comedy group I'm with uh it's the cheapest place yeah <laughs> are you in salt lake or uh ogden right like 20 minutes away from salt lake cool. um yeah uh it's nice that that's why I'm, I'm here now yeah i came from korea back to here because yeah i did um i did uh you know i did my year and a half in la and then my buddies went to utah first and i was like i miss korean culture so I went to Korea and then, uh, you know, then I, I chilled for a little while because Korea was fully open. And, um, then I went back to Utah and Utah is actually fully open too. I don't know about Georgia. How's Athens right now? It's pretty, it's pretty open. It's, uh, yeah. you know, this is a very academic town. So people take a lot more precaution here than in the more like ur- urban 
or you know, uh, rural, excuse me, uh, the more urban it is, <clears throat> um, the, the, the more people are taking it seriously. Uh, and then the more rural, uh, the more it's just like, the less you know, if, I, if I go, yeah, if I go 20 minutes outside of town, it's like, there's no, nobody's wearing a mask or anything. And oh, um, man. Which, whatever, man. Yeah. To, to each his own. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, uh, but what's it called? Uh, the one thing I noticed in, when I came back to America is like, there's like, if you wear a mask, you gotta like, not, you gotta wear it like a mask. Cause like half the people here are just wearing cloth over their fucking mouth. I'm like, I don't think that's going to stop anything. <laughs> no, I don't think, I don't think so either. I mean, honestly, like the last, I, I did stand up last week, actually. It was this oh, in Athens. Shop. Yeah. Yeah. In Winder, Georgia. Okay. So like, Winder. so one of these places that's like, it's like 20 minutes from here. Right. And so, like, I'm asking the audience, I'm like, do you guys think masks work, you know? And uh, most of them were like, yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking, you know, well, I just saw this dude take it off, wipe his face with it, set it on the table, put it in his pocket, and then take it out and put it back on. And I'm like, dude, yours is dirtier uh, than you have to wear. <laughs> I, know. I don't know about these Why? other folks. but like, Why do you wipe his face? Yeah, I don't know. He's like sneezing in it, you know? And I'm like, dude, bro, I'm pretty sure that's not helping the cause, man. I... I don't know. I, I, oh, I get, I, I get confused. Cause it's like, yeah, I mean, I, I understand how it could be helpful. Uh, maybe, but like also the way people treat them, I don't think that that is really sanitary at all. Uh, and exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then they, they wear like cloth. Cause in Korea, it's like, they all wear those I-95 hardcore masks. Yeah. But here this is like little clay. Yeah. The, the, yeah. yeah. So that makes sense if every single person in your country is wearing it, but yeah, they don't. In America, there's a little cloth, little bandana. You see the bandana sometimes. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I don't think it's stopping anything. No, it's not <laughs> either. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's. And I, I honestly looked for research. I was on Twitter and I saw this uh, girl's feed that was like asking the legitimate question. She was like, you know, do you know do they work or whatever? And I went through like this whole big long you know thread of just articles and articles and articles of no conclusive evidence that they really do anything and i took a few screenshots of like particle sizes of things too and uh it would appear to me that yeah based on the lack of actual data that there's not a whole lot of evidence that really it does a whole lot other than you know maybe be a barrier between right you know face and you know, the, the yeah, air. nothing. <laughs> yeah, <so. laughs> you know, but uh, I, we, I legitimately looked. Like, I, I was like, I'm. I really want to know. She, she was like, look, I'm not trying to cause a bunch of shit here with this post. I'm just legitimately asking this question, and people were like, oh yeah, here's an article. Here's and an you're article. banned. Here's an <laughs> yeah. yeah, and so I, would, I clicked on all those different articles, and none of them had any like conclusive evidence of like effect efficacy i guess right oh, like that's, the word. that's the fancy fancy word that's a big word yeah well i think <laughs> you you brought up a good point i think you brought up a good point about i think going back to uh what we were talking about earlier uh there's like a conspiracies have changed a lot now to where you know before I would say before Epstein, like it was conspiracies were like, it was a storytelling thing. Mostly it's, it was fun, but now there's like every conspiracy they have now involves data charts, logistics, and a hardcore appeal to authority. Like that's one thing, a big thing I've noticed. And I'm, I'm actually, I'm just realizing now, like right now, like they, there's so many charts, data, everything, analysis, numbers, it seems that way. I mean, how, what, do you feel? Because you knew conspiracies before. Before it was just like storytelling. It was, yeah, MK Ultra. They're doing this and this and this. Yeah, I mean, I followed along. Like I said, you know, like I got hooked on that Art Bell to eat, like at a young age. So I would hear all these outrageous, you know, theories. And yes, it was yeah. very much like myth, a myth, right? Like yes. These crazy myths and all that stuff. But then, you know, I guess you know, uh, maybe ten years ago, maybe maybe like eight years ago, I got into, I got into it more again. And there would be like these CIA documents that were redacted. And then I would have friends who were like, 
uh, who I was like, Hey man, this is actually legit. Like check out these documents. And they, and then they would be like, Oh, man, there's no conspiracies, right? Like that's just something the CIA puts out for people to, to look at, to trick them. I'm like, well, isn't that a conspiracy? You know what I mean? <laughs> oh God. There's gotta be a word for that where this conspiracy is like inside of each other. Yeah. I mean, it's like this crazy fractalized, uh, you know, uh, unending rabbit hole of, of uh, information or whatever. But Oh, I wouldn't even, like that. The, the CIA things, those are still just, I would say that's, that's still okay. The CIA documents and all those other ones before just showing like redacted and all that stuff. I'm talking more like just this year talking about the coronavirus and like uh, political stuff. It's just so much data and numbers. Every time I look into, I go down a rabbit hole, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hit numbers and data and stuff and appeal to authority. Like then it's basically numbers and data. And I'm like, what is this numbers and data? I don't know what the hell this is. Cause I hate numbers as you know. And, and then they're like, just trust the scientists, just trust this. I'm like, all right. That's what I'm realizing just now that actually my experience in the past, I don't know, eight months has been cause I, Go down a rabbit hole. That's why I don't really know much about COVID because I, I go down a rabbit hole and then I hit these charts, data, and all these stuff. And I'm like, and I am like, what the hell is this? And it's either like, go away, retard, or you don't know anything, idiot, or just trust them. On these websites I go to, I don't know. Yeah, no, I know you. I see what you mean now. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like it's been that way. Yeah, right, right at the beginning of the pandemic, like okay, everybody get stuck, stick in your house and listen to what we have to say. <laughs> right. Yeah. Don't go outside. Look at these this numbers, is, all this stuff. Yeah. Numbers, 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 numbers. If it saves one life, numbers, 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 you know, shame, shame, shame and numbers. Shame. Yeah. Lots of that. And uh, yeah, I, I totally, I totally agree. Like the fear drum and the, yeah. and the, and the, and the, and the push of just like, science the word science doesn't just magically yeah. make science sort of appeal yes you know, but apparently, I, I wouldn't even say appeal to authority appear appeal to like the science authority yeah right well i mean that's something that's kind of frustrating to me is because like i thought we learned science in school right like that's like there's like a method for that right like you don't have to wear a coat you know or like have like a high position to do an experiment or understand the physical world yeah. like testing something and then you know you create a hypothesis then you test the hypothesis and then you find out whether or not you were right or not and it doesn't seem like there's any time for that it's just like here's what it is go go well, on the, the funny thing is if you want to like get into like i guess more serious conspiracy than entertaining like these scientific figures are like you know in the beginning of the pandemic they they said basically yeah what you said like don't uh, just this is one example. Don't touch surfaces because coronavirus is on the surface. We know we're the authority. Don't do that. And then like five months later, they're like, "Oh yeah, it, it doesn't matter. It's not on the surface. We're we were wrong about that." But before they were screaming at us. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. There's been a lot of that. Just like double double speak or whatever. Just saying one thing and then redacting it and then yeah. changing their minds and uh, it's just super confusing. It puts you in a tailspin. It's exhausting, you know. Just uh, trying to wrap your head around the science. And I guess yeah, if if you're if you're trying to if a non conspiracy, my uh, explanation I guess would would be I guess they were just trying to be crazy cautious, right? Because in the beginning they were like millions of people are going to die. Maybe they were saying that just worst case scenario. I guess that makes sense, but the fact that the um, the fact that the uh, the public, the media, made them made made most Americans believe like you have to believe these scientists. I think that's where the problem arises. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, I think so too. And it's just like pushing it and pushing it and pushing, pushing it. Pushing it, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think that's uh, it's an interesting thing to to have to like face and. I think it's really, uh, you know, an important time to like think for yourself. That's what's so cool about like comedy and free speech, like you're saying, you know. Until um, they censor us. Until, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Until, they're, until we're censored or like put on, uh, what is it, BitChute and uh, Library, which this will be on those platforms. I don't know if you'll be able to search for it. <laughs> like, I don't know is that the... <laughs> 
<laughs> what is, what's the point of these platforms? You can't search anything. You just go on it and there's a video. I just think their search their search engines just aren't quite as up to par yet as like okay. YouTube or whatever. So if you go on like library, library is cool. I like library actually. I actually wrote that down. I wrote that down when you were when you were talking about it. Yeah, um, it, it's cool. Yeah, it's slick. And what I is think it, like social media? Yeah, it's like a it's it's kind of like a YouTube alternate. Um, okay. And uh, it's supposed to be like Web 3.0. So it should it shouldn't ever really get censored. Uh, the algorithm is supposed to be like it used to be, like uncontrolled, unbridled, so that like right. something picks up, like TikTok for instance. TikTok is still that way. Whatever is popular is going to continue to trend yes. because more people are watching it. Whereas you know YouTube, Facebook, Twitter is more like mainstream. But it's funny to think like because like it started out social media was like was alternative media uh, yeah it was the wild west man remember old youtube oh, jesus yes. christ oh bro. i miss it dude yeah a lot of the great conspiracy channels are just gone now. well they're gone now yeah they're gone uh which ones did you listen to because i really liked a lot of the ones about like uh uh, cryptozoology uh, project you're, you're, blue book the aliens oh man that's that, so fun that's i'm a big crazy. alien guy i'm a big okay. alien guy yeah uh what's it called uh cryptozoology uh that is because i think i just i'm just not familiar with the word uh that's just what that's like sasquatch and okay like, yeah i yeah. thought that was that yeah yeah, yeah. jersey yeah. devil sasquatch exactly all yeah all that stuff the jersey yeah 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 i we did we used to do a podcast called the national conspirator which is like just taking whatever conspiracy theory and just yes anding it into oblivion you know and I created a character for that who was a cryptozoologist, like this old man. And I actually got solicited off of Twitter on a fake account that I created in his name. His name was Cecil C. Collins. And, uh, you know, he's like this old man. And uh, these people found me and, <laughs> and solicited me for an interview. Uh, I believe it. They thought you were serious? Yeah, they, they think it's a real dude. And so they wanted me to like zoom in. And I was like, well, I can't <laughs> zoom, you know, because they're going to see me that I'm not this guy. Uh, <clears throat> and so I'm trying to convince them to let me just call in since I'm an old man who doesn't really know how to use the internet, you know. <laughs> oh, good. No, that's a good angle. Or, you know, I think, uh, wanna, yeah, what about the, uh, the old and olden days uh, conspiracy theorists like uh, attributes of them being, um, you know, paranoid about everything and thinking, uh, I don't want to do the interview. I don't want my face showing. They're going to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The paranoid sort of tinfoil hat uh, sort of angle. It's um, changed, hasn't it? Yeah. I, I mean, like, the, uh, uh, just the, the image of a conspiracy theorist now, I'm just realizing it's, it's, what, it's almost flipped. Because back in the day, it was like a tinfoil hat hippie, like left-wing liberal. Now it's like a, it's a conspiracy theorist is a right-wing. It's an all right that guy now. Yeah, it's yeah, crazy it is it has totally <laughs> changed and yeah the 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 idea of privacy too is just like nobody even thinks twice about it nobody puts up a fight anymore it's completely oh my god yeah that, you know like that's how far we've come and everything's like just recorded and tracked and digitized you know and wild, nobody even says boo about it anymore it's just like ah yeah so what you know it's just gonna be how it is it's interesting well, yeah. Well, I guess what can what can we do about it? I guess be the sites you go to. Those are so. Oh, what about Parlor? I was about to say. I don't know much about Parlor. I tried to post a video on there today, and I my patience was would not allow me to do so. <laughs> I did it. You just what happened? Remember. It was like compressing, oh, okay, yeah. Compressing, 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 and I was yes. like, oh my god, I'm fucking, I'm done. <laughs> I'm just done and i have fiber you know i have fiber dude come on parlor jeez um, but yeah i'm still on instagram a lot of people i think left instagram because of the new privacy policy and i'm like yeah i was talking to the uh i was talking with my friends about that uh two days ago or yesterday i don't know um so can you like what is it again they can like basically go through your whole phone now i guess so i don't think it was ever not that way though exactly yeah. so that's what I'm, I'm thinking i'm like i'm like i think they're probably the first people to tell you they're doing it <laughs> like just, everyone else is just doing it yeah i mean if you have an iphone like i think you're pretty much just yeah the stuff that runs on the background my friend uh, i have a buddy who has done a lot of work and been back and forth to china and so he had one of those huawei phones 
Oh, yeah. So he was like, dude, I'm not worried about the Chinese government tracking me. He's like, what are they going to do? You know, like they're going to come over here and like find me or something. He's like, no, I've got this Huawei phone. It's de-Googled. Uh, you know, it doesn't like, he's like, dude, you have no idea. Like locations are always running in the background there. All these apps are just stealing, oh, yeah, man. stealing your data like crazy. There's really not a whole lot you can do about that. And then, you know, it's 100%, like, man. It makes sense. And I'm on an iPhone, so I don't feel like I have any semblance of privacy. Like if I want privacy, I just leave my phone at home. I'll just go without my phone for a walk or whatever, I guess, you know? Yeah, <laughs> no. I mean, it's... The five G the five G towers will track you. Yeah. Did you get into that one? Did you get into that one? <laughs> yeah, dude. I oh man, yeah. that was fun. But it wasn't fun when like the people sending me the links were like serious about it. It's like Jesus Christ. Yeah. People got too serious, is I guess what I'm saying. But five yeah. G was fun. Yeah, it was. It's was super fun, you know. And I don't know what's happened. Maybe our brains are just fried now, but I mean. <laughs> yeah, it could be. <laughs> and I can't, but I mean, you know, if we're going to have 5G, I should at least be able to upload a video to Parlor. I mean, it just, <laughs> why, can't, why can't I upload a fucking video to Parlor in, you know, 30 or 40 seconds with fiber in my house? I'm I'll not, let you control my brain if you're, if I fast it. Yeah. I mean, come on. It's pretty that's, fucked up. And actually that's pretty fucked up that they control our brains and still give us slow internet. Oh man, that is really the <laughs> that's that's really fucked the up. Most cruel <laughs> yeah. about it, you know. That's how you know it's run by a satanic cult. That's how when you're <laughs> you know, like yeah. AOL <laughs> dial up. Like, <laughs> that's how I I felt. I've been thinking recently, especially today when I woke up for the nap. I'm on dial up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was great. Well, are you, are you doing anything? You're making videos. Are you doing anything uh, like live or like live on the internet streaming or what, what do you, what do you uh, put? Um, I think me and my group are, we're just figuring out, we're just, uh, we're doing everything and we're, we're seeing what sticks right now. Honestly, we're, we're just, we just, we have a YouTube channel that we kind of just started and uh, basically mostly Instagram. We're on TikTok now. We're just trying to see, yeah. Uh, I mean, we have nothing to do. Yeah. We're, on, we're all on unemployment. So. <laughs> totally. And it's like never been easier to make fun of stuff, you know? Oh, God, so. man. Well, it's been actually for, for me, at least, because I get banned. I, I have to fuck. But I get banned so easily, I guess, for anything conspiracy. But I think and uh, four months ago, I was pretty down. I'm like, I can't do anything. They're going to fucking ban me. But now I'm actually happy about it because I can... I'm figuring out, I have to figure out ways to get around it. So it's make me, you know, be way more creative. Yeah, that's cool. That is, again, you know, finding that silver lining, finding that yeah. advantage in the situation. It's not, it's not always easy, but, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a good exercise. It keeps your mind limber, you know? And, right. Uh, and it's not working too. There's, they're still banning my hashtag. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> I, it's not working. Uh, I need to be. I don't know what I need to do. Crazy, I'll figure it out. Yeah. Did Trying to, I don't know. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, uh, but uh, I, don't know. I was thinking out loud. No, you're good. Uh, yeah. So you guys, you guys have, have a name for your group. Yeah. Steak and mash. That's right. Yeah. Steak and mash. That's right. Yeah. I've seen a couple of y'all's videos on YouTube. I've seen a bunch of your Instagram Sweet. stuff. Really, really funny. Thank um, you, man. I'll definitely link all that stuff in the in the podcast notes, and uh, yeah, yeah. I, people can follow you on Instagram still. Hopefully, by the time this podcast comes out, <laughs> I'll be banned. <laughs> I'll be banned. I'll be banned, man. Find him on Parlor. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be the king of Parlor, man. Jesus, is it? I heard someone told me it's all like right-wing people that it's not even like about being uh alternative media or like it's just about politics isn't it or something it's i, I think it's kind of supposed to be modeled after like as as like an alternative to twitter so yeah okay supposedly more about politics the way that the scroll I, I downloaded it in like july just because i saw it on twitter and i was like all right i'll give it a shot and the way that the scrolling did just made my eyes cross and i just really never even went back until the other day and i was like I'll upload the sketch that we did. See if I can put it on parlor for Christmas. Christmas, right? Sketch. You know, 
who knows, whatever, you know, I know a lot of people just <clears throat> left Instagram and I think like the rumor was that George Soros owns parlors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I heard that. And he's, uh, that he, he owns another thing. I just, yesterday, anything, anything like it's see, that's like, it's okay. Now I'm realizing that conspiracies like this past two months, conspiracies have became like, because the past nine months they were so insanely serious now it's almost gone full circle that they're starting to get lunacy is a straight up lunacy is that yeah. it's i'm realizing it's hilarious now because two days ago uh vote.co or yesterday actually vote.co they announced they were shutting down i don't know if you you know that site right no uh-uh. so vote.co it's it was like uh when uh when pizzagate happened um it was the biggest pizzagate forum was their subreddit um but they banned it because you know soros and china own reddit and they uh the, everyone went to vote and then vote was really big for conspiracies mainly pizzagate and then yesterday the guy announced uh he's like yeah i'm shutting it down uh <laughs> he's like um i, I just I'm, I'm gonna take time to focus on my wife and kids i'm spending too much time on this website and then everyone was like, all right, Soros shill. I guess Soros bought the website. <laughs> people were all crazy. I'm like, conspiracy, like people, it's just gone full circle. It's just anytime anything bad happens, it's either Soros or China or something. Yeah, it really has gone full circle. It's gotten to the point where it be, it's just gone completely absurd, you know, it's yeah. all the way around. Yep. And the lines are so blurred and all that flood of information like we were talking about where it's just like, all these different gossipy things on top of more gossipy cuckoo ideas and on top of this and on top. I mean, you have to dig in and like do the actual research and find the actual, you know, those CIA documents, you know, from like yeah, back in the yeah. day, you got to look through those. If you want to know what's actually going on, you can't just trust what somebody says on parlor. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. It's, or I mean, just watch your Instagram. Video channel and then you'll have you'll get the downloads right <laughs> yeah i don't i don't know what i talk i honestly forget my videos i forget what i even talk about um what's it called the funniest part was what if i was on, on the subject of going going lunacy is when it was the most serious uh when the QAnon movement was the most serious i think that was the fun looking back now that was had to have been the funniest thing ever Back then it wasn't funny, but every single person was like, I don't know if you were into QAnon, but everyone was like, the storm's coming. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, dude. I got interviewed by a guy who's like legit. And I was like, dude, we can't be friends anymore. Like, at a certain point, I was like, I need to just delete this off my channel. Because like, at first, you know, he, he was talking to me about this uh, concept called pendulums and the reality transurfing book. And Ooh. it's like a really interesting uh, idea that, you know, that thoughts themselves like kind of collect and, you know, have their own energy and like people are contributing to these ideas and then they gain more momentum and then people like basically become like kind of enslaved to the idea itself, you know, and huh. uh, it's an awesome idea. Yeah. There's another concept that's basically. I'm interested in that. Yeah. What? Uh, pendulums. P-E-N-D-U-L-U. Yeah. Like a clock. Pendulums. Uh, there's a dude named Vadim Zeeland uh, who wrote a book. Uh, he's a Russian guy, quantum physicist. Uh, it's the second chapter in his book, Reality Transurfing. <clears throat> I can send you the link. Yeah, that'll. Uh, I wrote it down, but yeah, send the link would be good too. Yeah, um, I'll send you the link. Yeah, you're. Um, oh no, go ahead. Oh yeah, but yeah, I was talking to this guy about it, you know, and then like a few months later, he's like, "The storm's coming." You know, here we go, guys, and I'm like, "Oh." Jesus, dude, I just talked to this guy. I was like, I thought I was like talking about some, you know, cool and interesting stuff and he's falling for this. He's, how is he, how is he not seeing that? We just talked about this concept, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, now, it's like they're brainwashed. They were hardcore, like they, they right wingers talk about, you know, the left controls the media and the media is brainwashing everyone. QAnon was like, every, most of those people were hardcore brainwashed, it seems. Cause they were just spouting out there's the storms coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Everybody's going to get Crazy. arrested. All these people. Yeah. You know, it's like Tom Cruise is going to get arrested. I don't know who <laughs> else. You know, all these people. Alyssa Milano. I don't fucking know. It's yeah. funny how they're, they're uh, with all these crazy claims, this is the biggest thing is how, how unaccounted for people are. Because like everyone said, everyone's gonna get everyone's getting arrested. Uh, I don't know whatever date, like August thirty first, the storms. That's when the storms come and the balls dropping, and then nothing happens, and no one says like, "Hey, nothing happened." They just make another conspiracy. <laughs> right, they just keep pushing the date like further, yeah. and further away. And I was talking to this guy, and like, no, I'm not. I mean, no offense by this, but I'll, you know, we brought up like the the medical like deal that's going on i was like well, what about you know the the uh the vaccine or project warp speed or whatever that trump's doing and he was like oh dude it's just optics it's just optics bro. <laughs> and i was like what so he's just blatantly saying everyone's gonna get a you know the, the we're gonna send the military to your house <laughs> you in the arm and he's just saying that though for optics i'm like <laughs> what? wait a second man I, you know maybe the math is right but uh that just seems a little bit far-fetched to me and he was serious he was 100 percent serious yeah he was he was oh, serious man. about that one that's what i didn't get i was like I mean, <laughs> come on and then it, you're, you're exactly right it would be like oh man here the storm is coming you know such and such a day you know? <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was supposed to be like three days of darkness or something like yeah that. uh the blackout yeah, I, yeah. I had like a couple people on my instagram send me the like Hey man, hope you're hope uh, hope everything will be okay, man. We're all gonna be okay. Sending me DM me, I'm like, shut the fuck up, dude. Like, and then nothing happened, and then they didn't say anything. Well, it's because we trusted the plan, bro. <laughs> <laughs> blackout. We trusted the plan, so we didn't have to do the blackout because we trusted the plan so good. Oh my god! Now I'm remembering their logic. I'm remember, remembering the blackout logic. So the blackout was three days in july where trump was going to turn off all the media and <laughs> he's going to go on the uh, emergency broadcast network to every single person in america and because he'll black out all media he'll turn off everything and then he'll tell he said this was their this was their reasoning they're like he's going to tell the truth about the vaccine and no one can argue with him that's that was the blackout <laughs> what what would that have done Trump get on TV. Hey guys, the vaccine's fake. COVID's fake. And then all the lights come back on. Like, <laughs> like what would that have done? I don't know. It's a good question. But that was their plan. That was the final plan. That, that was an interesting plan. You know, uh, I am not really sure that I, that I understand it still, you know, and I, I don't mean any disrespect to people who are out there and like, like legitimately want freedom for people and legitimately want like you know uh positive things like that there's nothing wrong with that like that's a good oh, yeah. thing it's just like you can't put your stock and faith in somebody else right like you can't do that you can't expect oh, yeah. you know some orange dude with a bad haircut to like fucking make sure that you're okay you know it's just not gonna happen he doesn't care like these these super rich people, they're gonna be just fine, you know. Oh, yeah. No matter what happens, no matter what Bitcoin hits. Oh yeah. They're gonna be just fine, and they're not concerned about, you know, people they're like also, uh, us. Yeah. The non pedophiles. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Man. Well, and, and on top of that, I think what people if people are you know watching and they love conspiracies. I love conspiracies. I consider myself a conspiracy theorist and I believe a lot of them as I'm sure you do, but the people that you need, you never go like, you know, like uh, what's that movie? That's a tropic, th tropic, tropic thunder. You can thunder? never go, never yeah. go full retard. Exactly. You can never go full conspiracy theorist. Well, yeah, that's, you can never. That's exactly right. And so my favorite philosopher of all time, Robert Anton Wilson, he said that everyone has a belief system. He reduced it down to BS and to yeah. not ever believe anyone's BS 100%. Exactly. You know, like you can like who, who's that guy? I got to read this guy. Yeah, Robert Anton Wilson. I recommend uh, Prometheus Rising. That book is phenomenal. Oh, I, I know that. Yeah. Yeah, he's awesome. He actually wrote another book 
about and i've never read the one it's like a whole series i've never read but it's about like conspiracies and stuff like that and i can't remember the name of it escapes me but um but he wrote a whole it's okay it's illuminatus the illuminatus trilogy illuminatus that was true. that was something that him and another guy wrote together and i never read it but like a big thing that he says in that book is like if you have a secret police <laughs> that monitoring the police, then you have to have a secret, secret police monitoring Jeez, the guys, secret. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like a whole thing, but, <clears throat> but yeah, I love Robert Anton Wilson. He's my favorite. Uh, I gotta check him out, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I've written sure. a lot of stuff. No, but yeah, yeah, you can never fully, oh, go ahead. No, 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 uh, yeah, but yeah, you can't fully buy into anything, right? Like, well, it's just. And I think that that's the part, that's, that's the essence of conspiracy theories, it's the unknown. You don't know. That's the main thing. You never know. It's a theory. I mean, obviously, there are conspiracy theories that turned out to be conspiracies. You know, the Gulf of Tonkin, MK Ultra, all that stuff. Yeah. But if they're just a theory, you have to, you have to want to believe. You know, X Files. I want to believe, but if it doesn't happen, then <laughs> it doesn't happen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the thing about it. You know, there are like I, th I feel like that's the thing. It's like they people have turned conspiracy into a bad word, but like you can go to court and jail for a conspiracy. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the theory part is a theory, but like there's theory, like yeah. legitimate like people conspiring. Against, have you ever been not invited to your friend's party? They conspired That's against your ass. <laughs> yeah. You didn't get invited. And uh, there's a reason why uh, people conspired against you, but um, but yeah, I think it's really funny when the stuff like doesn't come to pass. That's like this big deal, especially the QAnon thing. Well, that is like the biggest troll ever. Oh my god! It's hilarious. I, I honestly think it is at this point. It's hilarious. I think Trump is like the biggest troll ever. I think like, and I don't know. I watched this uh, bit shoot documentary the other day about how uh, Alex Jones is Bill Hicks. Have you ever heard that? I, I, I I've seen that, or I, I just I've, I've not seen the documentary. Just people say that I've seen that. Theory. Yeah, there's a, there's a documentary. It's actually somewhat compelling. It's the ODD TV guy. I don't know if you are familiar no. with him. No. He's, I don't know if he's on YouTube anymore. That would have been like an answer to your question, like some of my old favorite YouTube. Uh, ODD TV? ODD TV, yeah. And uh, <laughs> he, he's, it's like a 20, it's not super long. It's like 25 minutes on Alex Jones being Bill Hicks. And it was somewhat compelling, dude. I was kind of surprised. But the funny part about it is if Bill Hicks didn't die and then became Alex Jones, he still got trumped. Like, he's still not <laughs> the biggest troll ever in history, you know? And that's yeah. That's sad to me. Like, that's, a, that's, a, that's not a win. It's not a win. It's, it's JFK level. <laughs> not a win. Really. <laughs> so Man, I got Alex Jones. Yeah, but... That's what honestly. That's what I want to do is make up these, make up these wild conspiracy theories and to entertain people. But I'm afraid they'll just believe it nowadays. <laughs> they'll just believe anything I say. That's a good point. You're yeah. be careful with that. You know, we'll troll too hard. You know, it might turn into an actual figure like Alex Jones. <laughs> yeah, you know? dude. Man, Alex Jones has got to be one of the most entertaining people I've seen in my life. I know he's he's wild, but God, if you, every time I listen to him, I'm like, this guy's. I love him. He's just so entertaining. He is. I mean, he, you can't look away. You just yeah. Look you away. really can't. I he's love him, man. Drunk and angry and yelling. You know, <laughs> he's a great man. Did you see that cut up uh, from when he was on Joe Rogan's show and when he's like, gay? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My uh, pink trips, dude. That was so good. That was so so good. I that. <laughs> that was so funny. Did you see uh, Joe Rogan on his podcast? I don't think I did. No, this is like this is like two weeks ago. He actually after the one he did and in, at Joe Rogan's place, they went to Alex Jones' place, and it's hilarious because I mean the stuff they talk about is pretty cool. I guess it's three hours, so it's too long. Um, but the funniest part by far is watching Joe Rogan trying to uh, sit in the tall boy chair, or oh, sorry, a normal chair. Cause yeah, uh, turn us into because he's so fucking short. He's like doing this out on the desk for Alex Jones. It's the funniest thing in the world because he's like super short in real life. I had no idea. Yeah, he's like five foot two. I'm not even exaggerating. Oh my god, I had no idea. Yeah. No, he's like swinging his legs like a kid on a toilet seat. No, if you if you look at the podcast, <laughs> he's swinging his legs. He's like dangling. Them. <laughs> 
that's really funny. And if you look at now, if you if you watch Joe Rogan again, and you look, you watch the podcast, you will see he like he has his own seat that like leans forward to make him look tall. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, he's a little mad manlet, man. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. I had no idea. It's hilarious. It's like Tom Cruise size. Uh, yeah, because Tom Cruise is like five foot three, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh shit, man. Yeah, my friend. Did you see Tom Cruise lose it on the people with the masks about the masks? Uh, I, I didn't see it, but I saw that that happened. Yeah, yeah, it's like a little clip. It's pretty funny, dude. It's kind of hard to find, but my friend screaming. It to me. Yeah, he's like going ape shit, dude. It's, <laughs> it's so funny. Oh, dude, that's, that's, dude, oh my God, that's the, one of the things that pisses me off the most about COVID is the little ounces of power that people get, and they just, like, uh, let's say, I walked into a chicken restaurant the other day, Zaxby's, oh, you know, Zaxby's is in Georgia, isn't it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Um, and, uh, (laughs) what? No, it's, yeah, they're everywhere, dude. Yeah, I I grew up in Tampa, so, yeah, 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 Zaxby's is everywhere. And uh, I went in there, and then I had to, didn't, have, didn't have my mask on because I honestly forgot it. And the lady just – they get this little ounce of power. They're like, sorry, you got to leave. You don't have a mask. Right. <laughs> like, she was waiting for someone to come in without a mask. She got so happy that she could oh, scream yeah. at us. I was like, man, this little ounce of power. Jesus Christ. Fucking tyrants. I hate man. that. Yeah. Jesus. It is funny. <clears throat> well, hell yeah, man. Um. I appreciate you taking the time. I got a oh, piece yeah. so bad. I should have no, peed before no like problem. you did. That was smart. That was very um, smart. But I'm going to put your links in the, in, the, in the bottom of the show notes. Folks, go check Matt, Matt's uh, comedy group out. Uh, you guys keep throwing stuff at the wall. I think you're very funny. Thanks, um, man. You guys are doing good work over there, so keep it up. Let's we'll try. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, hey, man, next, time, next time we got to talk about uh, you know, your trans, uh, your metaphysical stuff. Got yeah. to talk about that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the people that listen to my podcast are fucking probably sick of that. I don't know. Okay, never mind. <laughs> but but yeah, oh, you, I mean, you can link me stuff private. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll link you some stuff. I'm happy to talk about it. You know, uh, I I mean, I say that, but um, but I've done but you don't a lot want of to. work. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, I've done. A, I've, I've just done a lot of work on that. I've done like a lot. I've talked a lot about it. Um, okay. And I I don't know. People might. Well, no, it's on your channel. I can see it. Yeah, yeah. I can see. Sure. Okay, yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. a bunch. There's a bunch of stuff that I've done okay. on it. Uh, I just mean like you know, the people that listen to this show, they might just want more of that. I don't know. They might be like, shut Hell up, yeah. stop telling jokes. You're boring. You're not funny. You know? So <laughs> if that's the case, then I'll just, I'll just talk about, we'll talk about pendulums uh, or whatever. Uh, but yeah, it's super duper interesting. Uh, I love that. I love that stuff. I'll definitely send you some links about that. Yeah, and uh, dude, just stay in touch, man. I'll, I'll link you to the time bank so. as well. I've got a few yeah. comedian friends who like will revise scripts or you can riff with or whatever. Um, yeah. you know, lots of weird tarot readers that can like channel J- JFK for you. Devil shit, man. Yeah, yeah. Give you some jokes, you know, from beyond <laughs> the grave and, um, yeah, dude, just stay in touch. And I appreciate your time. Everybody check out the red pill ranger, everybody, M- Matt Barker. Thank you. Hell yeah, man.